Your main man returns today. We're going to talk about some TV shows, hit TV shows upon the nation. I like to ruminate upon some television shows that I enjoy to watch, and this is a great one to watch for role-playing game fans, and there's a lot of depth. And we're going to talk about The Mandalorian. I think of this video that had eight episodes out of season one. I don't know if that's going to be the last or, or not, but I really enjoyed this show. I'm not a gigantic Star Wars fan for a gamer. Um, I definitely like it better than better than average. Um, I thought the latest Star Wars movies were, were not very good. Um, but these, th this show has really been absolutely fantastic. Don't do that. Uh, my, um, my favorite, uh, thing in the videos or in the, in the, um, show was the, was the, of course, the Jawas. The Jawas was funnier than hell when they're sitting there and they're fighting the Mandalorian episode two. So again, there are going to be all kinds of spoilers because I'm talking about the show. So just know that if your nugget be, uh, confined, so you might not want to watch this until afterwards and you can enjoy with me. Uh, that of, of season one, episode eight, and below. But the jaw was, man, they was funny as hell. They're sitting there, or they come up, and they, they, they beat the Mandalorian, because we know the Mandalorian is of low level. That was great explaining that to my son to kind of show, okay, look, this guy, he's not Boba Fett. This guy isn't 20 levels. He's down here. So instead of being up here, he's down here. Um and the jaw was, you know, they, they're they like, they're like fearless little monsters. He like blasts one in the, almost blasts one in the face with the, with the fire and it just, uh, and it's right back. <laughs> it doesn't even care. It was almost burned to death. The filthy little vermin. Um, now, uh, when they, when they finally decided that, they decided to send them to get the egg. That was it, dude. That was like, that was monumental. That's monumental in my household, you understand? Where they got that two guy. Tuga, 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 and my son, he is, of course, a, a despicable space gremlin, and it's very clear that he did evolve from a Jawa, <laughs> as you come over here, as you can look at him and see the, the despicable characteristics of him, and uh, he very much is a, uh, a little Jawa-like thing, and um, I really like the Jawa. Yeah, and, and now that's how he... Yeah, they're one of my favorite... Star Wars races. That's how you request dinner now. He must say, to ga, to ga, to ga, to ga. That's hilarious. I fell out. I was still laughing thinking about that. Oh, and then when he gets the egg, he goes, oh, to ga. And he busted open it. The, the lead filthy space gremlin starts eating. Yeah, he doesn't even take his gloves off. <laughs> he just stuffs his hand in there. And the other filthy things come and jab their hands in there. They must yeah. love them that too, yeah. But they weren't selfish. They're all sharing it. Oh, you just stuffed your face in there and started eating the tuga for yourself. <laughs> God, you should see him open a bag of chips up his whole life. So he's been able to walk. So he's been about one year old. Like, he walked early. So he's been about one year old. He just jams this foul little hand there in my bag of chips. <laughs> and just wearing me out, running from one side of the chair to the other. Um, and uh, now he's big. I think he's about 5'4 now. Right, getting big. Um, so... That was absolutely hilarious. Of course, the Baby Yoda deal, that's, that's you know, it's very cute, very entertaining. And I think that kind of got over universally. But I, that, that, that Jawa just didn't get over enough. We got to give some love to the Jawas and that Tuga. That was, that was hilarious as well as hysterical to me. Uh, that has definitely been my favorite part of it. I thought it was pretty cool to see Gina Carano, the former Pride. Um, gosh, I forget what the weight class they had it because they did a weird deal. Like, I think she was supposed to be the middleweight because they made women's weights different than men's weight. Or maybe she was a heavyweight. I don't really remember. But she wasn't the core. She wasn't like a... I think she fought at featherweight. But she wasn't a featherweight there. I want to say she was a middleweight champion is what they called it. But I'm not sure. Um, but I think that's what she fought at 145. And uh, I think she just did a good job in her character. I like that. When they brought in um, Darth Breaking Bad there with the lightsaber. With the... Uh, you know, he's in the ship. And, and, and they made him a moth. And as far as I knew, moths were not like Sith. They weren't like you had like Vader over here, and then you had like Moth Tarkington over here. And Moth Tarkington's like a regular dude, but he's like, "Yo, Vader, I want you chill." And Vader's like, oh, "For a while, I'll chill." And uh, this guy, I guess, is a Sith and a Moth as well. I guess Moth basically means like general or high general or maybe president. I'm not really exactly sure what Moth means, but it means it means you a, a bad man not to be jacked around with. Yeah. Um. um. But they did kind of job him a little bit too hard. Like, I mean, if you already got beat, it's like, oh, I'm still here. It's like, well, yeah, but you're just going to get beat again. So, I guess. It's like in the last Star Wars movie. They're like, 
And now there's a group here that's kind of the same as the other group, except that already had the brakes beat off them. And now let's just, you know, let's not push them. Like they should, like if I was in there, I'd have just thrown that trash in the movie at them and look, man. All right. So the Empire is going to go over hard as a mug in this movie. They're just going over, and that's it. Like, we're going to kill all the rebels. They're all going to get disintegrated. We're blowing planets up left and right, and we are just colonizing you. And that's it. That's it. You're going to, they're just going to go over hard. And then you bring it back with another sequel of movies, and then you can let the good guys start building up new good guys. Because their cast was sucked, man. Like, none of those characters. Like, you need to bring back Han Solo, C-3PO, R2-D2, Chewbacca. Um, even Leia, man. We care about Leia, but they bring her back, and it's like, oh. So, all that kind of meant something. Those characters come back and mean something. Billy Dee Williams meant something. And Lando Calrissian, you understand? But these new characters don't mean anything. You saw them like 40 years from now, you'd be like, who the fuck's that dude? I don't know who he is. Yeah. Bunky that. Yeah. So, you know, I really sort of disavowed and disapproved of, of that. It, you got to get heat. You have to build heat. And it's a great lesson when you're playing role-playing games. You have to build heat. Heat. You can't just go in there and and just try to try to go over on everything. Yeah, I really I think um the way they built up the Mandalorian like they're like building up. You're like you're on a journey with them with like the character. You mm -hmm. go from like level one and then they get to level two and level three and four. You just slowly start building up. Building up. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, I think the character starts above level one, to be honest, but he's still, he's still low. He felt, in the first episode, he felt more like a third level character to me, if I'm going to be honest. I might sound kind of like sticklerish, but that, that's just the way I felt when I looked at the character. And then probably each, you know, he's kind of going up fast. He's leveling up fast, but, you know, I mean, Boba Fett was probably like 18th level or something, so, you know. And they get into what Mandalorians are, talking about Mandalorian isn't a race, it's a code, and I never knew that. In fact, I don't know if they ever... I don't think it's ever been explained before. I think we all just looked at it as that. That's a race. The Mandalorians are a race of humans. Um, seeing the assassin droid... I remember he had that little assassin droid toy when I was a kid. That's my man, Kevin. Is, is, it was his favorite bounty hunter. I am always been a, a boss man myself. You know, Transdotions. I never messed with no Boba Fett. I never messed with no assassin droid. I definitely messed with no Dengar. Bunk Dengar. But Bosk was my joint. And I think... Well, he didn't play toys anymore, but he had my boss toy. I'd saved that, and uh, one of my my do back the lizard thing, and my Bib Fortuna. Bib Fortuna is always my favorite character in, in Star Wars. I thought he was just tight, uh, the, the Twilic or Twick or whatever you want to call him. Um, I like Bill Burr's character. I hope that they do bring Bill Burr's character back. Uh, you know, the Boston comedian. He's uh, I'm not a giant Bill Burr fan, which might seem odd since you know I'm Irish and he's Irish, but um. Mm, I think he's okay. There's something, there's some kind of disconnect. I don't dislike him. I can listen to him. I think he's funny, but there's some level of disconnect there. He's not one of my favorite stand ups. You know, he's not, uh, you know, like, uh, like, I don't know, like George Carlin and Norm MacDonald and uh, I like earlier Chris Rock stuff. Uh, of course, Dave Chappelle is fucking phenomenal. Um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of stand up now, it's so safe with this. You know, I restricted, censored PC culture to live in a stand-up. Can't even say anything without losing his job. So, you know, most of the new stand-up isn't very good. I do like uh, Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham is pretty funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of stand-up I like. I really like comedy. Patrice O'Neill is, you know, late great, one of my all-time favorites. Um, anyway, I, I like stand-up comedy. And, uh, you know, big surprise. I like laughing. So, I think... Uh, I think he did a good transition to kind of being a badass. And then they worked a little bit of comedy subtly in there, which he did a real good job with. I was really, I really, <clears throat> I really liked him in that character quite a bit. Um, and as I recall, I think he got locked on the space prison. So, you know, he could be brought back. Um, you know, we'll probably be using the West End Star Wars game, which to me is really unfortunate because it's insanely unbalanced. Like it's like, there's like riffs and then like Star Wars, the D6 Star Wars game. And then like, you know, balance starts rocketing downwards. I mean, there's a lot of games. And I don't, like, kneel all the way at the alter of balance. But, you know, when you look at a character, one character might have, like, if they were equivalent, like, say, D&D &D characters, the character started with, like, a negative four, with negative 14 points. Like, here you go. Start your character off with your normal rolls and then take 14 points out of there. Oh. And you go ahead and have seven more. Oh, wait a minute. That's, that's a lot of points. 
uh, I don't know if I like that too much. So, yeah. that's kind of a problem I have. Talking about the Star Wars skin that we're going to be playing in? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. the stats don't. I he's don't like them. He's going to be playing a Jawa. Me. He's going to play a Jawa. Yeah, he's going to be like one of the strongest Jawa. Yeah. On the he has a 2D plus 2 strength, which is the max a Jawa can have. Yeah. Um, uh, so, like, I made a weak way who's like a... Um, He's like a wannabe archaeologist, basically. Uh, not not to go too far into the characters, so that's not really what we're talking about. But we're talking about some Tuga. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Well, it's about time for some AEW wrestling, so we're going to go watch that, and we're going to get some Tuga. All right, then, Barbarian Horde.